This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Foundation for, for strong faith today. Foundation for strong faith. And our faith can go from weak to strong. And someone's faith could go from strong to weak. It all depends on the individual. There are those who have strong faith concerning the healing and health. They have a strong faith concerning healing and health, but their faith is not strong concerning finances. But for when it comes to healing of the body, when it comes to their uh, they are held, they could believe God to be healed. They could believe God to be healthy. But when it comes to their finances, walking in favor, walking in preferential treatment, their faith is not that active. So for your faith to be active in every area of your life, you need to believe that it is possible. For my faith to be active for projects, for whatever the Spirit of God is leading me to do, I need to learn the act of trusting Him and trusting His Word. So this morning we're going to look at Matthew Gospel, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew Gospel chapter 7. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Matthew Gospel 7, and I like to read from verse 24. In Matthew Gospel 7, verse 24, it said, Therefore, whosoever that heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. You know, hearing the word of God and doing it gives us a foundation for effective and productive living. We can't do the impossible without having a foundation of God's word. If I'm going to do the impossible, I need a foundation of God's word to do the impossible. So he said, he that hears my word and do it. The hearing and doing must go together for faith to be released. We we'll release our faith by acting on what you have heard. And then Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever that heareth these things of mine and doeth them and do them, if I hear the saying concerning God is able to make all grace abound towards me, I can believe God for grace to do the extraordinary. I can believe God for grace to do the impossible. I can believe God for grace to do great things. If I can trust God, if I can trust his word, if I can trust the things he's telling me. And the spirit of God will always make us function in the direction of God's word. If the Holy Ghost is going to help you and I, it's because the knowledge of the word of God will have in our spirits. If I have the knowledge of God's word, it will lead me to act in the right direction. So here he said, this is what I hear these things of mine and do them. Hearing and doing. Two things are important here. I can hear it, but I didn't do it. It is in doing it that we release faith. I can hear that Jesus is the healer. But whenever I'm sick, I don't believe that he can heal me. But I've heard that my faith has not been released for healing. My faith has not been released for me to be healed. I need to release my faith to be healed. I need to release my faith to prosper. In any area of life where we need supernatural transformation, we need to have faith for that area of life. In any area of life where we need supernatural transformation, we need to have faith for that area. The area where you need supernatural transformation you need to have faith for that area. If you don't have faith for that area, you can't see miracles in that area. So I trust God by faith. I trust his word. But for his word to work for me, I need to act 
rest on the word. In third John verse 3, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospered. So the prosperity of your soul is connected to the application of the word. The prosperity of your soul is connected to the application of the word that no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to believe what God's word have said concerning that situation or concerning me. So strong faith is built on this premise of what God's word have said should decide what I do. What I do should be based on what God's word have said concerning me. I'm not going to worry myself concerning the situation. I'm only going to trust what God's word have said concerning that situation. Strong faith is based on relying and depending on God's word. If someone's faith is going to be very strong, it's because they absolutely trust the word of God. That no matter what they feel or no matter what they go through, they believe God's word above what they're going through. You know, some people go through a very tough situation or a difficult situation, and you see them walk declining from God's word. You see them not having this uh, connection with the word of God where they can say, okay, I believe what God's word has said, that no matter what I feel, no matter what is happening, I believe what God's word has said. If I believe what God's word has said, I need to act in the direction of what his word has said. If I believe what God's word has said, I need to act in that direction. I need to act in the direction of what God's word has said concerning me. If I don't believe it, my faith cannot be released. I release my faith by acting on what God's word has said concerning the situation. So strong faith is based on believing only what God's word has said. That's how you build a strong faith. You only believe what God's word has said. It doesn't matter the, the report someone gave. It doesn't matter what is going on in the natural. It doesn't matter what the situation may be. I believe God's reports. I believe God's report. This is what the doctor said about this situation. This is what the doctor said about these circumstances. But what do you believe concerning God's word? This is what the banker said. The banker may say, my credit is not that good for me to get that uh, facility or that opportunity. But what have God's word said? It is faith in God's word that produce the God kind of experience. So I should be word of God minded. That no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, I need to believe what God's word I've said. My experience should be subject to God's word. My experience, the things I feel should be subject to the word of God. In 2 Kings chapter 7, we saw the, the story of the four leprous men. We saw the story of the four leprous men. And they said to one another, why sit we here until we die? Why, why sit we here? Why, why are we here until we die? If, we, we, if, we, if we're here, we're going to die. If we're going to the city, we're going to die. But let's just take a step. Faith is an action based on God's word. Faith is not based on feeling. Faith is not based on emotion. Faith is based on God's word. Faith is not an emotion. Faith is acting contrary to the situation, but it's acting according to God's word. Faith is acting contrary to the situation. The situation is saying it's not possible. The situation is saying you can't have that money to buy that house. The situation is saying that your credit is not enough. The situation says it's not possible. Faith makes it possible. And strong faith, it is a faith that is based on the revelation of the finished work of Jesus and the knowledge of the will of God. I refuse to worry about this situation. I refuse to panic concerning this situation. I am trusting God. I am trusting what he has said. I refuse to be moved by this situation. This situation is not going to move me. No matter what I'm going through, it's not going to move me. I trust God. I trust his word. True faith. Is based on God's word. So Jesus said here, therefore, whosoever that hear these things of mine and do them and do with them, is that I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. You know, the rock cannot easily be moved. Rocks suggest stability. Rocks suggest consistency, continuity. 
you know, that so when a man hears the word and do them, he's, he's, he's like, he, which he has built his house on a rock that no matter the wind of life, strong faith doesn't bow to wind. Strong faith does not bow to storms. Strong faith does not bow to affliction. It doesn't matter what the affliction may be, what the situation may be. The strong faith doesn't bow to that. Strong faith doesn't bow to that. Strong faith does not bow to negative reports. The reports in the natural may not really be what we wanted to hear, but strong faith doesn't bow to the reports in the natural. Every report in the natural is, is subject to strong faith. And we cultivate strong faith by hearing and believing only God's word. In Psalm 107, like strength, he said, he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent forth his word. His word went forth. His word contains healing. His word contains life. He sent for his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Whenever God's word goes forth, there is a release of God's energy. Whenever God's word goes forth, there is a release of the energy of God. That no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're dealing with, I believe what God's word has said. It may take time for there to be manifestation, but in faith, manifestation is sure. It may take time for there to be manifestation. But in faith, we know that manifestation is sure. If a man is walking by faith, manifestation is sure. No matter what the situation is, I trust God. I'm not going to stress myself out. I'm not going to worry about the situation. I trust God. I trust the word of God. What God's word said is true. The word of God will come to pass. Living by faith is living in victory. How do we live in victory? We live in victory when we live by faith. So the foundation of strong faith, number one foundation of strong faith is the revelation of our righteousness in Christ Jesus. I need to know that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. If your faith is going to be strong, this revelation that you are the righteousness of God must be part of your everyday thinking. It is not faith in performance, it's faith in God's righteousness. I said it's not faith in performance, it is faith in God's righteousness. It is not faith in performance, it is faith in God's righteousness. It is faith in standing on the word of God that no matter what you feel, no matter what you see, no matter what is going on, I stand on the word of God. I stand on the word of God. It is faith. In God's righteousness, it is faith in God's righteousness that no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what I'm facing right now, I trust God. I trust the ability of God. I trust the wisdom of God. I trust in the strength of the Spirit. So faith in God's righteousness will produce a God kind of experience. Faith in God's righteousness enables you to overcome condemnation. You know, as we, as we, as we live our lives, and do things, we still have this body in the natural that can have feeling, that has emotion. And that was why Paul said we should not be conformed to this world. We should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I need to renew my mind as I can focus my energy in the direction of God's word. I need to renew my mind. And is God's word is the material for renewing your mind. The word of God is the material for renewing your mind god's word is the material for renewing your mind if you're truly going to renew your mind is because you have the revelation of god's word the scripture says the just shall live by faith not by worry not by anxiety not by depression but the just shall live by faith so i need to renew my mind to unlock possibilities i need to renew my mind concerning the knowledge of my righteousness in christ jesus I need to renew my mind to believe in my righteousness, that I am the righteousness of God. Now, I like us to look at this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
First Corinthians chapter 1, I like to read from verse 24. He said, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. And then we have vex, uh, vex 30, 1 Corinthians 1, 30 says, but of him, but of him I ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness. Jesus is my wisdom. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my sanctification and Jesus is my redemption. If I'm going to have a strong faith, I need to believe that who, who God has made unto us wisdom. Jesus is our wisdom. Why is Jesus our wisdom? Whenever you look at God's word, you unlock the wisdom of God. God's ways of doing things is found in his word. So the revelation of me being the righteousness of God is one of the keys to strong faith. Because if you don't believe that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, every time you miss the mark, every time you make a mistake, every time you fall into sin, or you have one challenge or the other, you will start questioning the integrity of God and his word. But when you know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, it makes room for repentance, which is change. It makes room for right confession, which can lead to transformation. So I need to have this understanding that I am the righteousness of God. I am not righteous by my works. I am righteous by what Jesus did. None of us could be righteous by our works. None of us could declare ourselves righteous, but we became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want to read this scripture. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. Okay, okay let's, do that. Look, let's, look at some, let's look at it from verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. So for he who made him, for he had made him to be sin for us. Jesus was sin for us. Wow. He made him to be sin for us. That simply means he took our place and gave us his place. He took our place and gave us his place and said, who knew no sin? He knew no sin that he might be made, that we, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, we are fair to be strong. This revelation that I am the righteousness of God irrespective of how you feel or what you deal with or whatever situation that is before you, it is important that I walk in this consciousness that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to let how I feel or what happens around me to determine what I do. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You must make that confession. And you must believe in that confession. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am a partaker of the divine nature. I have the wisdom of God. And here Jesus is sharing here, uh, sorry, Paul was writing. He said, for he that had, had he as he made to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, I want to read it from uh, the New Living Translation. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Righteousness is right standing with God. We have a right standing with God. So if you're going to have a strong faith, you must walk in the revelation knowledge of your righteousness. The enemy will come to you and say, oh, look at what you did last year. Or look at what you did this year. Or look at what you did this. The Satan comes with condemnation and accusation, lies and deception to separate you from the knowledge of who you are in Christ. And that was why Romans chapter 8, verse 1 said, There is no more, therefore, there is no more condemnation for those who are not in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who do not walk after the flesh, 
So the enemy will come with condemnation, telling you you are not worthy, you are not qualified, you don't have what it takes, you don't, you, you, you can't succeed, you can't excel. It comes with condemnation. You don't respond to the voice of condemnation. You respond to the revelation of your righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No matter how you feel, never project your feeling above God's word. No matter how you feel, never project your feeling above God's word. Let the word of God be hard and how you feel. Don't project your feeling above the word of God. Don't project your situation above the word of God. Don't project your circumstances above the word of God. No matter how you feel, believe in who you are in Christ Jesus. The more you walk in the revelation of your righteousness, the more you get better in your moral life, in your moral work, in the way you, in your character, in your person. And this is very important. God loves you. Another key to strong faith is the revelation of the love of God. If we are going to walk in strong faith, we need to have the revelation of the love of God. God loves me. God didn't love me because I was a Christian. He loved me before I became one. God didn't love me because I did what was right. God loved me because he did what was right. God didn't love me because I have what it takes. God loved me because he has what it takes to love me. So the revelation of the love of God will strengthen your faith work. When you know that God loves you, you can't give up when you have not seen results. You can't just abandon your work and say, well, things are not working out for me. I don't think God is helping me out. And then people just walk away. No. The love of God will protect your faith work. The love of God will protect your faith work. will flourish in our faith work when we function in the revelation of the love of God. That's how we flourish. That's how we make progress. That's how we excel. That's how we win in life. When you know that God loves you in your deficiency, in your struggle, in your inability, the revelation of his love restores hope for faith life. So if you're going to have a strong faith, you must know that God loves you. God is not mad at you. Even if you're mad at yourself, he is not mad at you. Even if you're angry with yourself about the situation, God is not mad at you. The love of God does not change no matter what we face, no matter what we deal with. The love of God does not change. God loves me so much. I can't give up on myself. I can't give up on my dream. I can't give up on my vision. God loves me so much. So I need to walk in this consciousness every day. God loves me. God loves me. When you have this revelation that God loves you, it will be impossible for you to lose a life. The next revelation you need to have if you're going to walk in strong faith is a revelation of I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I need to have this understanding that Jesus has taken care of the sin problem. God has forgiven me. You know, there are a lot of people who go to God and say, Lord, please, I have sinned against you. And please forgive me. But they don't really believe that God has forgiven them. They want to feel their forgiveness. You don't feel your forgiveness. You receive your forgiveness. Forgiveness is received by faith. I, okay, let me feel like I've been forgiven. No, it's not a feeling. The enemy will make you believe that God has not forgiven you. You lie to that man. You cheat on that man. You cheat on that woman. You did this. You did that. Or whatever it may be. You see, the love of God for you is stronger than I feel. You receive your forgiveness by faith. And if you don't believe in receiving your forgiveness, you will struggle in your work with God. Many people struggle in their work with God, not because God hit them, not because God is mad at them, it's because they cannot believe that God has forgiven them. They believe that they have to feel it. I have to feel it. I don't feel it like, that God has forgiven me. You're like, you have a car. You don't, do you? Oh, I don't feel like I have a car. You have a car. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, you have a car. If you have a child, you don't need to say, I, I don't feel like I have a child. You have a child. There is the visibility is there. The, the child is there. The same way, 
God has forgiven you, you don't have to feel it. You have to believe it. And when you believe it, your faith will begin to flourish. Because one of the things that stop the faith of many people from working is the knowledge of their sin, is the knowledge of their struggles, and they tell themselves, I'm not worthy. I'm not qualified. God cannot love me. I've done so many crazy things. There is nothing you have done. The worst sinner in the street right now, that drug dealer, that girl that is into prostitution, killing, kidnapping, God still loves them. He said, for God so loved the world he gave. God does not withdraw his love because of people's attitude. His love is what lays foundation for access. We cannot assess God without first knowing that God loves us. It is impossible to assess God Without knowing that God loves you. So for your faith to work, for your faith to be effective, you need to believe that you're loved by the Father. God loves me. God has forgiven me. Final point. If you want to have a strong faith, you need to believe in the goodness of God. God is a good God. God does not do evil. God does not do evil. And God is not a God of evil. God is a good God, that no matter what you feel, your faith should rely on the goodness of God. It is faith in God's goodness. It is faith in his goodness. God is a good God, no matter how I feel, no matter what I'm going through. God is a good God, no matter what is happening. The knowledge of the goodness of God will project your faith to a place of victory. The more I walk in this consciousness that God is a good God, it will project my faith. God is good. So when I look at situations, circumstances, I address it from this perspective of his goodness. Because God is good. Because God loves me. Because God has forgiven me. Because I'm righteous. My faith begins to work. You need to know that you're righteous. You need to know that you've been forgiven. You need to know that God is a good God. You need to know that God loves you. you need, these are the mentalities that leads to strong faith. You can't have strong faith in God without having the understanding of these uh, four things I've shared on your, your God's love for you. You've been forgiven. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You need to know about the goodness of God. When you have four, this revelation in these four areas, man, you begin to prosper. That is what helped me. In most difficult time, in most challenging time, I remember that God loves me. I remember that God has a plan for me. I remember that God loves me. I remember that God has forgiven me. I remember that God has a big plan for my life. I remember that Jesus has died for me. I remember that I'm a son of God. I have a relationship with the Father. You need to tell yourself that God loves you. If you don't tell yourself, the enemy is going to use condemnation to whip you. The enemy will tell you you're not worthy, you're not qualified. That's why God cannot do it for you. That's why God cannot help you. The knowledge of condemnation will frustrate faith. Nothing frustrates people's faith like the knowledge of condemnation. Refuse to reject yourself. Refuse to look at yourself as nobody. You are blessed. Ephesians 1, like 3, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing. You are blessed. This consciousness is very important if your faith is going to flourish. You need to have the mentality of the blessing. You need to know that you're blessed, that no matter what I'm going through, I'm blessed. The knowledge of the blessing will break the limitation. I am blessed. I am blessed. You need to walk in this consciousness. That should be your mentality. Don't look at yourself like someone who is struggling. Don't tell yourself, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. The more you say you're struggling, the more you have faith and struggle. You tell yourself, I'm prospering. I wrote down some confession. So let me just read it. It's here. In my diary here, I, I wrote these confections that I was just like yesterday or the before yesterday. And I was reading this to myself. I said, I am prospering in wisdom. I was telling myself, Faith Man, you're prospering in wisdom. I am prospering in riches and in wealth. I am prospering in riches and in wealth. I am prospering in strength and in health. I am prospering in strength and in health. I am prospering in glory. I am prospering in the blessing. I am prospering in power. I am prospering in honor. It is important what we say because our lives will be a reflection of what we're saying. Your life is actually moving in the direction of your dominant thoughts and your confection. People are surprised. Most people are surprised. Why is my life like this? 
Why is my life not better? They keep saying that, and that is what they have. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. He said, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I get what I say. If I say I'm blessed, I am blessed. If I have this mentality, oh, I'm under a curse, I'm under a curse. So whatever I believe is what I'm going to receive. I have the mentality of I am under the blessing. I am living in the blessing. And let me say this to you. Don't let the knowledge of your past mistakes distract you from the knowledge of the goodness of God. Don't ever let the enemy tell you that, oh, this is not going to happen in your life because of what you did. No, there is nothing you did that can undo what Jesus has done. What Jesus has done can undo every wrong thing you have done. So don't beat yourself. Don't condemn yourself. If you want a strong faith, you need to believe in your righteousness. You need to believe in your identity in Christ. And you need to walk in that mindset. I am carrying the blessing. I'm blessing my going out. I am blessing my coming in. I am the righteousness of God. I am a child of God. I am sitting in the heavenly places. Even when you're messing up and you're doing things you're not supposed to do, don't lose your confession. A young man came to his pastor and said, Pastor, I smoke a lot, you know. I've been going through this addiction for years. And any pastor he meets will tell him, throw away the cigarettes. He'll throw it away. He's going to pick it back. So his pastor told him, the next time you want to smoke, just provide and say, in the name of Jesus, I, I want to smoke this nicotine. I want to smoke this. You know, just pray and then go ahead and smoke. So the guy was like surprised. This is the first time he's hearing that kind of cancer. And he went ahead had a cigarette and prayed in the name of Jesus, you know, prayed with it and smoked it. He did it the second day. On the third day, he quit. He couldn't smoke anymore. Why? Because as you begin to believe God, faith goes to work. And I'm here to say to you, no addiction that cannot be broken, no situation that cannot be resolved, God's word has the potential to change any experience. Father, we thank you this morning for the word we have heard. Thank you for the release of the spirit in this service. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching by YouTube, watching by, by Facebook, watching that is uh, present in the Zoom church here today. I pray that the anointing of the spirit will be upon you, that you'll flourish and you'll prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that you continue to walk in abundance of wisdom and supernatural understanding and excel in the things of the spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Now, I want to give our offerings. I like us to prove our offerings and our tithes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to give our offerings and our tithes. We'll, we'll release it by faith and we'll trust it for supernatural miracles. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to give right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we're afraid. Amen. You can do your giving by going to finishworktv.com and slash giving. Or you can go to PayPal, it's with my teaching at gmail.com. Also, I want to encourage us to be out on Wednesday. On Wednesdays, our prayer service and Thursdays, our teaching service. The time is 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, both days. So I want to encourage you to share the flyers, to invite someone to church by this week, and big things will happen in the name of Jesus. Until our next broadcast, don't forget this. There is greatness in you, and Jesus is coming soon.